With a short 35 mile drive to arrive at Mead Cove, we'd crested over the 1,000 mile mark of our trip. It's a beautiful expanse of shore with grassy campgrounds perched above sheer cliff drop-offs. This is our campsite for the night. In other words, the perfect place for a family with small children. <laughs> Honestly, it was almost exactly the thing we were looking for. Our Canadian friends were right. <laughs> yeah. But we chose the lowest possible campsite just to be on the safe side. We climbed the narrow path to the water for some rock skipping practice. <laughs> oh, I think you did three. Good job. <laughs> Nature's beauty combined with a secluded location, the peace and quiet that can only be ruined by some jabroni with a loud drone and someone revving their engine because they got stuck on the beach. And did I mention the jabroni with the drone? <sighs> Perfect time for a hike. The campsite manager told us that one of the must do's was a hike to the top of a mountain overlooking Meat Cove. One, two, three. all the way up to the edge. Okay. okay? Sorry if your legs are getting scratched up. I didn't realize it was gonna be so thick. Oh, oh my it, gosh. Look that way, guys. Whoa, oh my gosh. That's amazing. Mom, I see the river. Okay. You see the water? Yeah, it's so pretty. <laughs> We're almost to the top. Baby country. But be very careful, you guys. I think it's just the kitty top right here. I'm not walking anymore. Whoa. Is that the end? No, there's more. I don't want to go for it. I mean, this is the high point. Okay. It, it goes lower from here. Okay. Okay. It did go lower. But first, you had to get across a small portion with daunting drop-offs on both sides of the path. Mm. Look at this. I'm not scared of this. You're not? No. Are you? Yeah. You're scared and I'm not. <laughs> there are so many great reasons to hike up a mountain with your kids. One, you can teach them to confront their fears. Because I don't want you to slip and fall off. That's why I'm scared. Oh my gosh. I don't want to look that way. <laughs> Don't fall. Okay, okay. Stay right here. I got your hand. <laughs> Help mommy through it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Tell mommy it's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You made it. Two, you instill in them the pride that they are just like you. I don't think I need to hold your hand, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not at all. Okay. Yeah, like, I'm not like mom. <laughs> Here, I want to hold your hand. And three, you cement their belief that you will keep them safe 100% of the time. You're walking a little bit too fast. Oh, Can sorry. I not hold your hand? Yeah, sure. I feel less safe. Okay. <laughs> sorry. You like this place? Yeah. It's so pretty. Okay, can we get a picture of us here? Are we in Nova Scotia? We are. It was breathtaking to have this little peninsula in Nova Scotia all to ourselves. It was definitely a place where you have to be there to truly experience the grandeur. Despite my best efforts, I couldn't quite capture it. Where's a jabroni with a drone when you need him? The hike was grueling, but worth it. And the exhaustion was a wonderful spice for dinner with a spectacular view. It's so good. The kids would have eaten almost anything. Yummy. 
you guys rock today. The campsite manager had offered to let us plug in that night to trickle charge, but we didn't really need it, so we skipped plugging in. In fact, we just sort of forgot to worry about the car, which is kind of the point, right? That way, you have time to observe the innocence of children connecting with nature, or, like the old adage says, to really stop and pet the flowers. This was our paradise, and we made it here in our little 238 mile per charge electric vehicle. We watched the sunset and spotted the first stars, which the kids rarely get to see when we're home because it's usually past bedtime. We talked about extending our stay in this magical place, but then came the night. Almost immediately after the kids fell asleep, the wind picked up. It got so bad, we took the rain fly off our tent so there would be less resistance. The low light began playing tricks on April's imagination. She was convinced we were moving ever closer to the cliff's edge. By morning, with the tent side still smacking me in the face, it was anything but a restful night. Well, except for the kids. They slept better than any other night of the trip. After bad sleep and wrecked nerves, it was really nice waking to a clear day and to see lobster boats dropping their pots. It was oddly peaceful, despite the unrelenting wind. I don't remember what I was thinking at this moment, but maybe it was that my kids sleeping peacefully while the thin layer protecting them is being ravaged by outside forces is an apt metaphor for what an egotistical humanity is doing to the Earth's atmosphere. But as I watch this right now, I'm thinking that bald spot on top of my head is way bigger than I knew. And why didn't anyone tell me? As much as we loved Meat Cove, our nerves weren't going to survive a replay of the previous night. So our plans became about making things stress-free for the weary. We found the perfect empty beach after lunch to spend hours exploring. Then we drove to the Mid-Trail Motel. You're going to get caught. Caught in what? The rain. Getting caught in the rain should be the least of your worries, son. For you, are caught in a web of your parents' whims. It looks like a storm is coming. Because look how, look how dark the clouds are over there. After a quick rock skipping review, we scurried back inside to avoid the rain and settled in for a comfortable night's sleep in preparation for another grueling yet iconic hike we were about to force a seven and three-year-old to do on their tiny, short legs. 